Hey everybody, it's Mike here from The Art of Guitar. I'm here with another artist series video. It's been a while since I've done one of these, but I love to do my homework for these. So it takes a while because I always wanna make sure, number one, I'm playing the stuff correctly. And second, I wanna make sure that I truly honor the artist. So in this case, it's Tom Scholes. And I grew up listening to so much of Boston's music just because on our local classic rock station, KQRS, uh, they would always play bands like Boston, Foreigner, Journey. And uh, I think just subconsciously, I was drawn into the world of rock guitar because of these bands. One thing that always stood out to me when it came to Boston's music, besides the awesome vocals, of course, was the incredible guitar playing and the guitar tone of Tom Scholes. I didn't know who he was back then. I didn't even care about guitar, but I always thought that sounds so like heavy metal, but it's not heavy metal music. It's like heavy metal guitar in a rock setting. And it sounded so different from a lot of other bands. So when I got the idea to make this video recently, I knew I had to get one of Tom's Rockman amps. And I ended up getting one of those portable, uh, this is called a Model 2. And this thing sounds incredible. Check this out. <laughs> So it's very true to Boston's tone and I love it. Now this thing is great, but it runs on eight AA batteries. And so it's kind of crazy to have to put eight batteries in this thing every time it dies. So I'm gonna buy the adapter that I just found out yesterday exists. And I'm actually gonna get those rack mountable units as well because those just feel more stable. And of course you could plug those into the wall. I saw some footage of Boston and it was a pretty recent concert actually. And I looked in the background and it's just a big wall of Rockman products. It's so crazy. Okay, let's get to his techniques. Uh, there's going to be a lot of lead techniques, some rhythm techniques, and I actually get to whip out the 12 string today. So I'm pretty excited about that. It always makes me feel really good whenever I hear the harmonizing guitar leads from Tom Scholz. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play the beginning of a solo where it's just a single line, and then I'm going to add a harmony later in post-production. So you guys will be able to hear both guitars, but you'll only see me playing one of the parts. <laughs> Did you hear and feel the difference when the other guitar came in? It just pushes it to a whole nother level. I love that. Here's another great example of great harmonizing. I used to practice my vibrato by setting a metronome, and then I would try to do small bends or even big bends to match it. And it's kind of funny because that's actually what Tom does in his solos a lot of the times. So you're gonna hear, for example, a bend, and then the vibrato follows the tempo of the song. I typically don't do that. I always feel kind of weird following the beat with the vibrato, but it works perfectly for Boston leads. So this is the part where they kick into long time after foreplay, the guitar goes like this. It's kind of fun too to do vibrato with the tempo because there's no guesswork involved. You never have to wonder if you're going too fast or too slow. You just follow the tempo of the song. It works. Another huge part of their sound is the way Tom layers his guitar parts. Sometimes it's just a couple of electric guitars, like basically doubling, but uh, sometimes he'll throw in the 12 string, a clean guitar, and then do harmonizing leads over the top of that. And it just results in this gigantic wall of sound that I love. Here's the dueling lead part right before the chorus of More Than A Feeling. Uh, you're gonna hear a whole bunch of stuff going on. So first of all, we're gonna have, of course, the lead part. You're going to have the other guitar. I think that's how it ends. I'm not sure. Now I get to use the clean section of this amp. Sounds really great, especially with a chorus. So you're going to hear a clean guitar going like this. And I get to use the 12 string. We're going to have this. Layer all those parts together and it's going to sound huge even without vocals, drums, or bass in this case. You guys might be wondering how many times I'm going to use more than a feeling as an example. A funny thing happened as I was going through all of his techniques. I found out that most of them can be found in the first like four songs on their debut album. So he uses all of his techniques in almost every solo. It's really cool. It made my job a lot easier because I didn't have to scour like a whole bunch of tunes to find all these different techniques, but uh, they're all pretty much concentrated together in a lot of these solos. But for the next example, I'll jump to a whole nother album. So we're gonna talk about Third Stage, the song Amanda, which a lot of people love that song. It's one of my favorite songs by them. We're gonna have the 12 
12 string, the clean guitar, and the distorted guitar going all layered on top of each other to create this awesome bridge sound. <laughs> He talks about one of his pedals that he created called the Hyperspace pedal, and he said only two exists, and that really bummed me out because I really wanted to get my hands on one. Of course, I think a lot of people do. He could probably manufacture those things and sell them for like three grand. I bet you people would still buy them. But with that pedal, he's able to get some insane delay sounds, infinite sustain on his guitar. That's where your notes just ring out forever. And he also can do this whammy bar trick. So it sounds like bar dips. He can also do full dive bombs too. Now you can emulate a lot of his sounds, but you're gonna have to do it the hard way, the old fashioned way. In order to get his infinite sustain, you can use a pedal for that. You know, they have sustain pedals, but uh, you could also just stand in front of your amp, turn it up loud, just be careful for your ears. And uh, you could just get feedback and hold out a note for a long time. While it's sustaining, you can get the bar dip sound by using a whammy bar. Since I'm not using a speaker cab with this Rockman, I can't do the feedback trick, but if you ever stood in front of a loud amp, you know that that's possible. Way before Kurt Cobain went like this, Tom was doing that percussive strumming in a lot of his songs. Take for example, Actually, the first time I heard Smells Like Teen Spirit, I thought he was ripping off more than a feeling. Cause listen to this. And of course, Don't Look Back has those scratchy scratchies as well. When people think of guitar solos, they often think of just going off, you know, uh, just going into solo mode. But I love the way Tom kind of walks the line. He does a balance between a melody, a almost rhythmic sound, and a lead at the same time. So instead of just going off with a bunch of fast notes, he'll do a vocal line, basically. Uh, it sounds like he's copying basically what a vocalist would do. And sometimes he actually does copy what the vocalist does. So first we'll just do a very vocal-like melody, this one. <laughs> It's almost like your guitar is singing a melody when you play like that. I love it. Uh, speaking of direct vocal melodies, this part from Amanda. So keep that in mind if you're ever writing a solo of your own. Sometimes you could borrow from the vocal line or you could write a melody that people could hum along to. It doesn't necessarily always have to be blazing, you know? You may have noticed when I was playing Don't Look Back earlier that I was really just using my first finger. And that's something that Tom Scholz does really well. He uses the classic, what I call the Rolling Stones form. <laughs> Of course, bands like Kiss and Poison use this as well. But he does such an effective job making memorable riffs out of this that I had to mention it. Another song that does that is Peace of Mind. And once again, I love the fact that I could choose from a small pool of their biggest hits because most likely you're gonna know these songs and uh, all of the techniques are contained in these songs. It's amazing. So we have this part. <laughs> So the beauty of that one finger trick is that you get so much sound out of some very simple movements. As long as you can get the bar really solid, you can add your middle finger and ring finger and even your pinky sometimes to decorate it. So that last example is great because you're doing this typical sound like that, but you can add these double stops. I owe a huge debt to Jimi Hendrix for getting me started on that kind of stuff. Tom Scholz is kind of addicted to doing pick scrapes or pick slides. And what's great about that is that you're able to get such a cutting sound by using the edge of your pick and it jumps out. It really makes a lot of uh, things exciting if you just add it. So I found a thinner pick is better for doing this. He likes to go all the way down the neck like that. He'll do it really fast too, like in between licks and riffs. It's really impressive. 
But here's a little detail I noticed that he does a lot. He'll do a quick up and then down. So instead of just going down, he'll start it off by kind of going up real fast, like a real quick twitch. If you combine that with his hyperspace pedal, you get some incredible sounds. And once again, I really wish I had one. Tom, if you're listening, I will pay any price for that thing. I probably shouldn't say that actually. Another tendency that I noticed is he likes to do a pick scrape off of a huge bend. And it's a cool sound because it sounds like a note is going up and then it's just being torn down to the ground. I believe he does that in long time. I can imagine Tom in his basement studio just totally geeking out, you know, coming up with all these great parts, all these cool sounds, and then, you know, actually becoming his own second guitar player for most of what he plays. So like I said earlier, he's either doubling his guitar parts or harmonizing. But in this case, he's actually going back and forth like he's dueling with himself. And this is in peace of mind. <laughs> And he'll put that over on one speaker. So if you're wearing headphones, it's over here, let's say. The other guitar will come up on the other side, like a dueling back and forth. But then at the end of that back and forth, they come together for this final lick. If you study lead players, you'll notice that they start to have patterns of how they like to start and end solos. And there are a lot of occasions where Tom likes to end the solo with a walk up to a bend. It's like this really epic way to end on a high note, if you will. So one of his endings that he does is this one. Once again, that was peace of mind. But then if you listen to the song called Something About You, one of my favorite Boston songs, by the way, he does a very similar thing. Just he adds an extra note. So he goes... Now, if you want to combine some techniques that we already did, you could do something like that, do a huge bend, and then end with a big pick slide. That brings you right back to playing some power chords, getting you back into the rhythm section of the song, and it's a cool way to tie everything together. Tom has a whole bunch of bends that he likes to do. The ones that really stand out to me are his cry bends. So this is a pre-bend. You bend it up, you hit it, and you make it sound like it's crying. I love pre-bends because it allows you to do multiple things. You know, you could do the cry bend. You could do the staccato walk down. And you could also do what I call the saw technique. That's where your pick is almost like sawing your guitar string and you're just raking it back and forth. Now there's a really special way to do this. Once you do the pre-bend, put your pick on the string and then basically push the string up and down with your fretting hand, causing the pick to go across it. Like you're trying to just saw that thing in half. So I'm not really moving my picking hand. I might be slightly, but I'm not trying to. I'm really letting my fretting hand do all the work just by bending. Now the result of this, in this case, is we're gonna be doing a full step bend, but we're gonna be only coming down a half step when you hear the next pick. Isn't that cool? So you're only getting a half step difference between the two. You could actually do a whole step difference if you want to. All you gotta do then is just let the string drop all the way down to where it's normally sitting. All right, let's talk about some of Tom Scholz's motifs. And this is really just patterns that he likes to do. One of them that's a really great option for people that don't have too much shred experience, but they wanna sound fast, is just to do a double pull off like this. This might seem like a really basic, simple idea, but it's really hard to get it clean and consistent. A lot of people go for it and they just sort of mush it together because they don't do the work of maybe some metronome practice. But uh, if you really take your time with it, it could be very, very clean. Here's a cool circular motif that I hear him do sometimes. It's where you bend on the third string and then you do a hammer-on pull-off combination on the second string. Here's another one for people who don't feel like they can really shred well. Uh, it's a lot of notes in a short amount of space, so it sounds like you're doing something really impressive. Once you get used to that picking pattern, you could do this everywhere and it just feels really natural. That pull-off gives you that extra note.
This last motif actually covers three strings and it's a really cool pull off combination and you just glide across like this. Kind of sounds like that song by Genesis, throwing it all away. But if you just let this roll off of your fingers, eventually it just feels really natural and you get in this pattern where it feels right to play it. See, I'm really accenting the first hit. When I first started learning Tom Scholl's solos, I noticed that he does something all the time that I actually thought I got from Kirk Hammett. But uh, both he and uh, Tom Scholl's do this all the time. And that's just the flutter, the hammer-on pull-off. I'll call this the Scholl's flutter. Because as you start playing his riffs, his licks, uh, his melodies, you'll find that they're everywhere. So you already heard me play it here. See that little flutter I did at the top there? Here's another example I already did. That's all it is, it's a little flick. Maybe I should call it the Scholl's flick. No, it doesn't sound as good. And then also in the motif I just did, it's right at the top of it. If you play Fade to Black by Metallica, you'll see that Kirk does this all the time as well. When people think of arpeggiating chords, they usually think of clean sound, where you have a clean sound and you're doing these really nice, you know, whether it's Stairway to Heaven or whatever, you're just doing some kind of picking across the strings. But Tom is not afraid, I think it's because he has such a great tone, to do that with distortion. Sometimes notes get lost in distortion if you do arpeggios with them, slowly, like with chords, but because of the tone, it actually works really well. In the song called We're Ready, he goes like this. I tried that with other tones before and the notes just get lost like I was talking about. So make sure you have the right tone if you're gonna be doing distorted arpeggios in a slow chord format like that. It sounds great and none of the notes are getting lost. This next thing is gonna seem very small, but it really adds to what he does whenever he plays a lick. He does this a lot. He'll add the fifth interval above his final note a lot of the time. So for example, See, at the end, you may have thought I was done, and then I added a quick fifth interval and came back. Sounds great almost anywhere. If, you, if you're playing down here, for example. It's like putting an exclamation point at the end of your lick. That's just the way I think of it. The last two aren't the most exciting techniques, but they're very essential if you're going to play a lot of Boston songs. I learned how to do this back when I was in a southern rock slash country band, and I had to do this all the time. That's where if you take, for example, the key of E, and you do some walking bass line notes. So you would add these. Sounds like Day Tripper by the Beatles a little bit, but we'd also add these. So you got the flat seven there. Good way to practice that is just to go up and down like that. I would recommend doing that because you're going to hear this, especially the third fret to the fourth fret right here, minor third, major third, in a lot of the riffs. See, it's kind of quick right there, but hopefully you heard it. Also, this one's a lot more blatant. So that's from the song Rock and Roll Band. So get really used to that because it's gonna be in a lot of tunes. And the final technique is gonna require a lot of flexibility in your hand. I recommend doing the finger yoga stuff that we talk about on the website quite a bit. That's where you do your stretches because we're really gonna to have to reach that pinky. So for example, maybe start up really high. We're gonna be doing a power chord and we're gonna add our pinky two frets higher than your ring finger. So you're gonna create the sixth interval. Think like um, Once Bitten, Twice Shy by Great White. 
Yep. You have to be able to do that technique because Tom Scholz will just throw that in every once in a while, sometimes in a very difficult spot. For example, at the second fret, that's a huge stretch. <laughs> I love ending like that. Okay, so that is going to be the Tom Scholz techniques and uh, have fun with these. They're very useful. There aren't a ton of them. Like some of my videos, I have like 30 techniques or whatever, but these are all very useful techniques that you can use universally. So have fun with those. So I really want to thank Tom Scholz for being such an influence on me, such an inspiration throughout all these years. I'm still learning from him. And uh, thank you everybody for watching. We'll catch you at the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.